Yes, here we go. Another cracker. A guy who's won the lot, Morris Ross. Thanks very much for coming on, mate. Thanks for having me. And a fellow Dundee boy. Desperate to get me our Dundee boys on. But mm. we'll try and keep the Kens and the S to a minimum, all right? Yep, absolutely, yep. People don't understand this. Um, now, if anyone know, anyone thinks there's a bit of needle between us, it's because you are in the Adler Pirates and I was in the YMU. <laughs> <laughs> Have you came to hold up now? No, 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 good, no. Good, good. Three days are gone. <laughs> so, back living in Dundee, mate? I am. Um, Unfortunately, you know, I'm not saying that in a, in a bad way, but just the circumstance that I'm back is because obviously I lost my job in the Pharaohs mm -hmm. um, after only what, 10, 11 games. Right. So it's a bit unfortunate, but no, it's good to be back in Scotland. I'm seeing good people again, meeting proper football people. Mm -hmm. Bumped into John Brown at the Hibs game there, bumped into Neil Lennon and Robbie, Robbie Nielsen in recent weeks. So it's um, it's good to be back and seeing proper football again. Any guys support of you? Did they help you? Well, supportive, you know, they, sit, they, they give you time. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's all oh, you need. Somebody to just acknowledge, oh, how are you doing? What are you up to? Listen to you for 10 minutes. I mean, but obviously Neil Lennon has invited me over to, to see that, how they do it at Hibs, so I'm, I'm going to take them up on that offer. Brilliant. Robbie's also said the same. Um, I've been at the Murray Park um, seeing how they do it there. So, no, it, it's nice. And, and I'm grateful that you know, they, they're actually going to give me an afternoon and seeing how they do it. I bet you never thought the days when you were kicking Neil Lennon... It Years later, you'd be in watching him helping, him not, helping not, you. Not at all. Uh -huh. um, but, but listen, I think it's, Neil's, Neil's a good lad. Um, I think he's very much misunderstood. Uh, football man, and he's a proper manager. You see the job he's done at Hibs. Um, and, you know, he did a decent job at Celtic as well. So, no, 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 he, I think he's a, he's, a, he's a good man. And for him to invite me when he could see that I was a wee bit maybe down when I was explaining I'd been sacked and whatnot, I think it's a uh, mark of the man, actually. Brilliant. Uh, we'll go back to the start. As I say, grew up in Dundee. Mm. What was that like growing up? Just kicking the ball about the streets? Yeah. Adler, I, as I said. I, I, it wasn't, football wasn't really in my family. Um, the, only, the only person that was into football was Marty Val, actually. So, <laughs> what position did she play? I, I, don't, I don't know, but she's, <laughs> she's, she's, she's Celtic daft, actually. Uh -huh. um, so it was, just, it was just, I just kind of stumbled upon it. I stayed at my mate's house and he said, oh, I've got a trial at Dundee West tomorrow morning. I didn't even have football boots or anything, so I had to like, Borrow football boots off my mum's pal's son. Oh, I two sizes, two Val. sizes too big. Umbro Diamondbacks they were, <laughs> um, and then I just just stumbled upon it. And then we took a love for it straight away. Basically, I yeah, just being in a wee team and, and just <coughs> having something to look forward to on the, on a Sunday. Um, ended up, I was me and my best mate Keith Gibson. You probably know Keith Gibson. Uh -huh. So we were pals. That was us. We were inseparable. Uh, just playing football all the time. Just, just the same as anybody else growing up in football. Yeah. So how did Rangers spot you in Dundee? Because I think there was a few Charlie <coughs> Adams came uh, through for Dundee, Jamie Winters. Yeah, um, Keith Gibson was there, Lee Wilkie came through. Um, it, do you know what? It was, it was lunchtime. Right? I went to the, to the to the wee shop across Sandy's, a wee paper shop. I was only 12. I just, obviously, it must have been what, first or second year. And the man that owned the shop said, oh, Rangers are looking at you. So, oh, Rangers, come on. I was, I was training at Dundee United at the time. Right. Like, mm, yeah, okay, you know, all oh, your pals are there. What was that? What was that? And just try to ignore it. And then they waited two years. So they monitored me for two years. Um, and then obviously they took me in. They took me in a trial game on the AstroTurf before a game. Rangers were playing at night. So there's probably maybe a thousand people watching. Wow. So just, just the wee things, they start building you up to be, you know, you need to perform in front of crowds and all that. So. I thought that was a great thing what they used to do that because it, you were nervous. Uh -huh. The Astro across the yeah. Uh -huh. So the people in the, the the club deck would be watching, and then the people at the side. So it was it was a good it was a good kind of a good grounding for young players. And was it a no-brainer for you to eventually sign for Rangers? Was Dundee United still wanting you to sign there as well? Yeah, I signed with Dundee United, and then uh, you know the good old days with the and the pen the, the contract in pencil. Uh -huh. Um, but when my 14th birthday came, it was S forms in the days. Yeah. And my mum was like, you're not signing there. Um, she did not let me sign anywhere, actually. It was Man City, Newcastle, all the teams. Um, and it wasn't until I was 16 that I was allowed to do it. So why, so why when Rangers? you're 16, what, Rangers, I just, I don't know. Man City offered me a smashing deal at that age. Um, way, way more than what Rangers were giving me. I mean, I, was, I signed for Rangers for £45 a week cost my digs and the second year I went up with 75 so I was a wee bit flush <laughs> my, my zone card can get covered quite easy um, but you know Man City at that time were offering what 7, 8, 9 
I've got seven, seven hundred quid a week, mm -hmm. and I was thirty thousand signing on fee. And but I just I want to play with Rangers. I want to play with Rangers. And why was that? Just to be the treated just since you were younger. No, it was just a feeling. Just right. a, just a feeling. Um, I believed I was going to get my chance at Rangers. I never believed because Man City wanted me as a right winger. Uh, you're right to join and you're never no, a right winger, mate. No, <laughs> and I was a centre half. I was, I was only a right back when De came in. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so no, I just had a feeling and uh, yeah, and, and thankfully I did. You know, I, I would never change that. So how did you find that young boy for Dundee moving through to Glasgow and the youth set up at Rangers? Intimidating, really intimidating. Why? <clears throat> it's just ruthless, it's just different. You know I mean, you've got 22 boys there at your level plus 20 reserve players then you've got 30 first team players. You just think, it's going to be, it's cutthroat. Boys are cutting you up every day. But it, it, nowadays it's, it's maybe, a, maybe a bit less. Uh, but it was just ruthless. One or two positions every year. Mm -hmm. You're all vying for that position. So it was sink or swim pretty quick. I mean, I think, I remember the first week pre-season, and they probably know, forget, uh, like me for saying this, but I'll, I'll, I'll omit his name. One of the boys was crying in the, in the tunnel, just couldn't hack it, mm -hmm. just couldn't hack it. The demands physically, the, the demands being shaven, suit on, every day, boom, 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 jobs done. Everything was just, but you're just being, it's like going into the army. You're, you know, you're, you're taking a wee boy who's been the best player at his club all his days into an environment where you're just a number. Mm -hmm. 47 I was, that's how far away you're, 47. Um, and and it's uh, it's oh, but again we're, we're no we're no pandering to the masses here. We're creating Rangers players, mm -hmm. one or two, no twenty, because the twenty eight, eighteen of them can't hack it. And it's not the ability; it's the mental. Mm -hmm. It's the mental side. I mean, I played with some amazing youth team players: Jimmy Gibson, Stevie McAdam. I mean, these boys were super talented, super talented. But for one reason or another, I just couldn't get through. So did you take to that style then? Um, it took me about six months. I was, um, I was, I was, I was, you know, I was in the whole confrontation thing, respectful, um, super respectful of Bomber. A wee bit scared of Bomber, you know, because of the man he is and, and the style of him. But, he create, he he molded me into a Rangers player. Mm -hmm. He is, you know, we things. He used to. I remember he caught me in the laundry one day. Ah, you know, bomber. Ah, big Bob's better than you. <laughs> no, he's not. Ah, ah, yes. No, he's not. Ah, well, we'll see. And walk out. But then again, he he can't help <clears throat> play me. Mm -hmm. He probably did the same to Bob. Um, and by the way, Bob was a better footballer player than me. Um, but he would, he, would, he would pull me. He said, you've got to be doing extra. You're not going to be a special talent. You've got to be an athlete. So he'd pull me and do extra running with me. But maybe he would see it. So so he, I would sneak away uh -huh. and, and Bomber would take me up the stairs and, and then I end up getting called Bomber's boy and all that stuff. You know the part uh -huh. of it at youth team level. But no, I'm very grateful about Bomber. Took me for being a wee boy and a oh man. So is it more the, the things they say to you, other than the coaching that, that you feel brings brought you on at Rangers? The things that I, brought I, you I, I never understood you? football until Jan Bouters came into my life. And what did he teach you? Oh, could write a book on it. Different level, honest to God. Um, yeah, I understood my positioning as a right back and all that, but that's fine. But understanding the game completely. He's, I think he's the first coach that says pass and stand still. You always get pass and move, pass and move when you're, when you're a kid. Pass and stand still. What if you're in the right position? What do you need to move for? Let the opponent move. You save energy. And it just totally changed my way of thinking. See, you said coaches helped you as well. Mm. Were the older boys good with you as well, players-wise? Um, in terms of first-team players? Yeah, or? helping you. Or maybe being hard on you. It was old, it was old school. Remember, I've, I've came into the nine-in-a-row generation. So there was no molly cuddling that. You were just skivvies for the first team. Yeah. Um, I remember I remember Trevor Stephen, but I was single-minded there. Trevor Stephen came to me one day and said, uh, uh, probably didn't even know my name, uh, wee man, could you break the World Cups in for me? I was like, no. So I got blisters. You're in the first team. I want to get in the first team. 
I'm not breaking your boots. And he went and got somebody else to do it. <laughs> Where do you get that feeling? I, just, I don't know. I don't know. Just single-mindedness. Mm -hmm. And that obviously helped you progress into the first I, team? I think so. I, I, no, but pretty, my attitude is why I, why I broke into the Rangers team. Mm -hmm. So when did you start to think, right, I've got a chance of getting into the first team? Um, the first time was we played... I remember getting a call. Bomber said... Uh, because I, you, you had to be on the bus for a certain time and I was just coming down the track and Bomber just shouted up like casual yeah Mo you were the first team like, just, he, he never said here good luck son or anything uh, hey, you were the first team deal with I was like oh okay um, and that was the weekend of the Celtic game so I'm thinking I'm going to be in the squad against Celtic can't believe this um, but Dick Advocat never put me in the squad so Bob Malcolm never trained with the first team I trained with the first team and the squad came up and Bob was in there and I was out. And John McGregor, oh, you, you can't be doing that to a young lad and that. And Dick Avocat just said, well, Bob's more physical ready for it now than Morris is. But Morris will be, you know. And was that a blow to you? Oh, you're devastated at the time because mm -hmm. you want to get on that first team bus. You want to hear that, you know, you'd be part of it. Opening up the door and Jimmy turning up the music full blast and getting booed by the set of fans and stuff like that. You want to be part of that. Mm -hmm. And you're impatient when you're that age. You, know, you, you think somebody gets oh, five minutes or oh, that's them, they're going to be forever and you're not going to get a chance. Just immature. Mm -hmm. um, but you're just so keen to get on. See, on that upbringing for Bomber and guys mm -hmm. like Tommy McLean and stuff like that, see, if you never had that, do you think you would have made it in the Rangers first team? I don't know. I don't know. But, you know, I come from a... A thing that kind of gets overlooked, and or maybe I'm overlooking it. Um, you know, for a ten year old, I was getting coached by an internationalist, Morris Marpas, Paul Sturrock. Um, who else was was doing that? Um, Davy Nery, no. Davy Bowman was there. Bowman, uh -huh. um, so for, for a ten year old, I was getting you know proper coaching, and I think that any club. Should any, I think any club in Scotland or, or, or England, should that should be written into players' contracts. Go and put something back in to 10-year-old boys on a Monday or a Wednesday. Not every week, but go and do it. Mm -hmm. Because it's, it, I understood the game much better <coughs> because of it. Mm -hmm. no, I'm, I'm Morris Malpass, 53 cards for Scotland, telling me how to shape my, shape my body or how to move my feet. You know, that's priceless. Because you didn't get that now, do you? Didn't get the older players coaching kids? Not really. And I think it's something that, I mean, a 10 year old boy, is he going to want to listen to, you know, uh, me? Uh, you know, <laughs> you know a, a first team player uh -huh. or a guy that's just found himself in the system at, uh, at Dundee and he's got his A license? I know what I would rather listen to. Mm. So I think it's something the clubs should definitely do. Um, and I think they would get the rewards for it. Just back to yourself, uh, mm. up to him with the first team, as you said. Uh, how did you find the standard? Because you oof, said you were limited ability-wise. Uh, we, we, they used to do 5v2 boxes. 5v2. Uh -huh. And it was five square metres. Wow, tight. Tight, mate. And there's two guys and all that. And, and Jonas Tern and like Claudio Reyna and stuff like that. I'd never seen them in the middle. I was constantly <laughs> in the middle. It was a doing for me. Uh -huh. I hated the boxes. But then, slowly but surely, you start to find your rhythm and of course, it was still uh, often in. Um, and when you're a young boy, if it's Vicky Barry and it's not perfect for a man, you go, you know, you, you know what it's like. Uh -huh. So, no, but it definitely makes you better. But it was nerve wracking because every day I'm, I'm basically treading water. I have to be really super on it every single day. And they boys, because I had so much talent, could just turn up and hear a 60% session. So they're fresh all the time. Uh -huh. You're coming in, battering your head every day just to basically tread water. But see, just even training with the players, does it bring you on as well, technically? 100%. The difference between me at 18 and 20 was 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 big. Um, confidence, you know, be, becoming a wee bit more mature, you're, you're changing from a boy into a man again, and just, just playing with better players. Mm -hmm. So my, my whole thing was about positioning myself in areas of the pitch that I can influence the game without needing to dribble, for mm -hmm. instance. Because I knew that I'd be, I'd be, I'd get found. You know, I know it's a bit of a cheesy one, but Guardiola talks about it all the time about let the ball come to youth kind of thing. These things that were getting taught to me by Jan Vouters and whatnot, 
um, Barry Ferguson, Claudio Nena. So I was getting all that in the days. It's not until later on when you've not got players that are capable of finding you in the areas, you become less effective, influ yeah, uh -huh. less influential in games. I ask everyone that comes on, you ever on the receiving end of all looking for Barry Ferguson? Oh, that was daily. <laughs> What's it? Oh, what a crab it guy. <laughs> but, but again, that was just that was just the epitome of the, the whole that's what he got done to him. But uh, Stuart McCall, Ian Ferguson, John Brown, that was what it was like. Mm -hmm. And Barry was Barry was the heartbeat of Rangers. Mm -hmm. um, absolutely the heartbeat of Rangers. Remember one in particular that he cracked it in there? No, because it was just constant. So it was just every day. Uh -huh. It was just like saying good morning. You knew you were going to get it. Uh -huh. I remember in the cup final, I just scored the, op I scored the opener in the, in the Motherwell cup final, David Cooper final. And then I got, I, I felt you know, I was in the zone that day. I just one of the days where everything was clicking. And I came in an area that I could have shot and I could have cut it back, but by the time I thought about it, I th the boy had intercepted it. And Barry rifled me. <laughs> Absolutely destroyed me because it was a tap-in for him. But I got, I got caught on two minds. But again, even though we're one and a half, I've just scored the opener, he's hammering, berating me. Uh -huh. Just how it was. Just the standards, uh -huh. Aye, it's your high but standards. But I always ask his early debut. You remember it? <laughs> mm. Um... I think we won, was it 7-1 at Dens? Uh -huh. That against Dundee, uh -huh. I think Rosen, Rosen, was it the boy Rosenthal? He played as well, didn't he? Right. I think it was one of the few games he played. It was 15 minutes ago. And I remember a big Scotty rolled me one and Dens was, Dens was Bobby uh -huh. that night. Who's Scotty? Big Scott Wilson, remember? Big oh, Scott the big Wilson. set half, uh -huh. uh -huh. Cracking lad. Um, and he just, he just rolled a square one to me and I could see it. I, I could smell it was going to go over my foot. But it's, I remember it. Uh -huh. It's bobbled on my foot right on the halfway line and Dick Advocat and Bert Van Lingen got caught on Sky Sports by the way <laughs> laughing <laughs> obviously I, they know that I'm a wee kind of being nervous and pure uh -huh. stressed but going on Bob Bob two of them laughing and they've caught on Sky so, did you know you were getting on? no no but you used to play kind of mind games I remember we were playing Galatasaray I'm not sure if it was Champions League or it was UEFA Galatasaray at home I think Haji was playing wow I think in the 10 row and uh, half time Morris out you go I'm thinking oh I can't be getting on here God, God, that's right home but he was just starting the mind to think start thinking about it start thinking about it and he did that for weeks um, and then he gave him a chance so were you warming up and he shouted you doing it Dins? Uh, yeah 15 I was yeah warming up that bottom side of the Rangers fans would be and my mum was at the game of course we wasn't it before camera phones and that Every single picture blurred because she was all the place. <laughs> that our, our boy was obviously getting on, and then um, but I always remember Neil McCann. He played he played on the right that night, and he kept coming short for me, making it easy for me. So I only got six touches and just gave it to Neil six times. You know, just keep it simple as a young boy. Um, but I remember that. That's a thing that you know he's he was kind of sympathetic to. Bobby pitch, making it easy for the young boy. Brilliant. I always remember that for Neil. And was there a congratulations that after the game for the players making your debut? Yeah, yeah, and I obviously got the, the normal stuff. You get your top signed and Rod Wallace is congratulating your big tour Andrew Four and all that. Brilliant. Um, and I was obviously I came out into the, the foyer, my mum was there, and my wee sister and that was my granny was there. And uh, I basically Dick Avocat the gaffer comes out and just says, Ross, you were rubbish. I walked past. <laughs> that was it. Was he a good laugh, Dick Advocate? Oh, yeah, he had a sense of humour. Did he, right? Because uh, you see that with your sense of humour. Uh -huh. um, nice man. Never took any nonsense. Uh -huh. But he helped you a lot, uh, No, was it more of the, the coach? But see, see, when you've got top players, and, and every single player was top player, you're, it's just about keeping harmony. Uh -huh. Keeping harmony and basic principles. His principles were always five attack, five defend, five build it. You know, and, and five control it. Was it? Uh, is that what he would say? Yeah. And um, tactically, just awesome. Honestly. Uh -huh. Awesome. What do you think he's seen in you? Just a robot. A robot. Somebody that would do what they were, they were mm. asked. Uh -huh. mm. Goes a long way, doesn't it? Uh, you only made one, that was your only appearance that season. Mm. Was that frustrating for you after you made your debut? No, not at all. Just being up with the first team training and learning every day and smelling what it's like to be playing with top players. That's the biggest thing about leaving Rangers that kill me. No playing with top players, no seeing how they, how they prepare, how they handle the ball, how they interact. 
it's, it, you know, it, it, Rangers, is all, Rangers and Celtic are always going to have good players. Mm -hmm. But we're talking world class players. And it's only players that you see at Chelsea now and, and whatnot. So it's, uh, now we're signed. Imagine Rangers signing a Chelsea striker now. Mm -hmm. Flo, uh, 12 million quid. Who were the top players, the real top Every players? Every single one of them. Were they? Honest to God, there wasn't a bad player. I mean, I mean, even boys like, you maybe don't even think of it. Bert Conteman, what the fuck a player he was. Was oh, he, right? Because <laughs> he got a bit of a hard time here, yeah. didn't he? Uh -huh. Yeah, because his style was maybe a bit unorthodox, but striking a football. I think it was only him and Bob Malcolm. Him and Bob Malcolm the best strikers of football I've ever seen. Bob's up there with that, with Bob them, Malcolm. Uh -huh. <laughs> Why do you think Bob never made it all the way to the top? I played by Rangers. Uh, but I mean, for, for more years. Um, I think, no, who am I to, 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 to you, comment? Because you've talked about him massively with his yeah, ability. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. and, and, and I think, you know, I, I, I wouldn't want to badmouth anybody. Um, but if you're asking me the question, then it's, I, I, it would be the physical side. No, right. Uh -huh. the, 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 that wee turn of pace. If Bob had that wee turn of pace, he would have done. But remember, there was a spell where Barry was injured, Bob was playing in the, the, the holding midfielder role, and he was sensational for eight games. Sensational. Man of the match, controlling matches, just plugging things in front of the back four. Barry got fit, Bob, bang, out the door. That's the hard part of being at Rangers, isn't it? I could see it in Bob. That basically killed Bob. Um, and, and yeah, but you know, it's, it's about tiny, tiny details. Mm -hmm. Barry's a stand up. Out you go. That's it. Uh, a massive highlight for you must have been starting at PSG. Yeah. Is that one of your first stunts? I can't remember. I think it, it was. You know, uh, it's, so, it's so long ago, you know, uh, so much experience. Would you, since expect then. It, would you expect it to be put in a game that size? It sounds daft, but you're, you're that young and cocky and all that. You think, ah, I'm ready for this. Uh -huh. I remember Craig Moore said to me in the tunnel, uh, we, were, we were talking about only two weeks ago, and Oz was obviously trying to. Calm me down a bit. Ah, be a bit nervous, son. You know that uh -huh. the way they speak, and uh, I was like, no, and I wasn't. But there, there have been times when I've been nervous. But that night, I just I wasn't nervous, and I should have been. I mean, look at the lineup for PSG that night. It was Heinze, Anelka, Acocha, Arteta, Ronaldinho, wow. Pochettino, Latizzi in a goal. Proper, proper lineup. How how hard was it to play against? It wasn't hard because you were playing with players that were just as good as him. Well. So it was like, kind of cancelled each other out. Um, if I was to play in, in, in isolation against an Elka, he would rip me to pieces. But when I'm, when I'm, in, a, when I'm in a system, I've got Kenny Jopman on the right, I've got Oz on my inside, I've got Barry Ferguson on the inside. It all works. So it's, it's not just about... So on that, is it easier to play for a Rangers than it is to play for... 100%. Uh, it is easier, huh? 100%. Why? Because just pass the ball to a good player. The, the, you've, you've constantly got options. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's definitely easier. Right. Yeah, it's getting to that part is the the, the, the difficult part. Yeah. Getting to that level that you, you, you're, you've got a chance to do that. Um, but the biggest thing we play in Rangers is the mental side. And that you must perform every single week mm -hmm. or you get replaced. It's, uh, it's really tiring, mentally uh, tiring, yeah. Especially for a young kid as well, eh? Especially when you're not good enough and you know you're not good enough. That's the thing. Was that constantly on your mind that you yeah. weren't good enough? Mm. I was reminded every day. By coaches and players? Or? No, not so much coaches, but you kind of like yourself. Mm -hmm. You can kid on, and I had to, bravado and all that stuff. But you know yourself. How can I... <laughs> I go for playing, thinking, oh, this is my year. And they go inside the right back internationalist. Uh, there you go. There's your answer. Standards all the time. Constantly pu pushing it, taking it to the next level, to the next level. So it's not just the as you say, mentally draining, just constantly challenges every week at Rangers. Uh -huh. mm. Hard. Just on the PSG game, can you remember who scored the penalty? Uh, missed the penalty, sorry. I know who missed it before we went to penalties. De Boer. Missed Balloon one over, over the, the bar. bar uh -huh. But for PSG? But we were on, I remember, because I'd, 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 I'd played, I think, 110, 100, 110 minutes or something, and I got cramped. Yeah. So Dick took me off, and so as I've come off, we've got the penalty. Now, we were on, we were on 18 grand a man that night. Wow. 
and the beer's blowing one out of the bar. And obviously, I was not, <laughs> much, I was not much money. I'm thinking, you banned it. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, we we ended up we ended up going through. But was it was it Pochettino that, uh, that, that Pochettino, missed the penalty? Uh, uh, Klaus saved it. Yeah. Where'd you spend your eighteen grand? Then? That suit jacket. <laughs> hardly, <laughs> hardly. It's a um, I, I probably just invested it in something. How mm. hard is it to keep your feet on the ground as a young kid when you're playing in these big games and you're, you're earning big money? <sighs> but yeah, of, of course. When 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 you're when you're when you're going for dinner with your pals and that, you get the bill and you know, and you play up to it a wee bit. Rangers player, you know, you, you play up to that, and but it's, at the end of the day, it's a load of nonsense. Um, but yeah, it is something that does affect you. Did affect me. Um, get carried away and stuff like that. Um, but hey, youth is wasted uh, on the young, innit? Exactly. Uh, just on that, Klaus saved the penalty. How good was Klaus? He was. He was exceptional. You know, for someone that's, I think he was only about five foot eleven. Uh-huh. Wasn't it big? Same size as me, but just under six foot. Yeah, so he, he, he had, but he had immense presence, and he was, he was a hatchet man. Absolute hatchet man, but just one of these quiet, quiet leaders. You know, you've got ranters and ravers, like say Barry Ferguson type, and then you've got Klaus, who's the the, the quiet kind of. If Klaus came in, you would kind of straighten up a wee bit, or you would. Just a presence. You would just watch what you're breathing. Would he do stuff like that? Would you? Huh? But they were all like that. Well, they were all like that. Every oh, that. Ronald, Ronald Debeer would come in and pinch me every day. I was six percent body fat, and he would still pinch me as if to say, six hmm, percent. I'm. I'm, I'm in better shape than you, but just I'm watching. I'm watching. Uh-huh. Just on the boor, how good are they to? Yeah, they, they, again, you know, talk about Jan Vouters and um, teaching you about the game. They, they, they were, they, they were on a different level, and they knew they were on a different level. Uh-huh. Um, so they had that arrogance about them as well. I just loved it. I just loved it because they knew, and everything they said, you said, nah, I could see that. But it wasn't just the boor. I mean, Craig Moore was, was a, a super intelligent defender. Mm-hmm. Never got enough credit, Craig Moore. See, in training, did you ever get properly roasted by anyone? Like, do, is there ever one day you think? I do. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, this is a good one. Right, go. Um, Great question. That's not even on the sheet, and I've just came up with that. Short, short. Uh, we, we we were playing maybe like a maybe like a forty by forty, maybe fifty by fifty, and it's got clipped up to shorter. Avalazzi, this is. Yeah. Uh-huh. So, so I was. Uh, I was always trying to be level. I was always, always kind of teach my centre half be level, because you, if it comes flat, you can nick it. You know, if it comes into him, he's controlling you. So I was kind of level, but it, the, the ball was perfect then, so it came at an angle. But he's 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 went towards it, right? So I'm thinking, yeah, I'm going to steal this. But he's in one action, he's chested it, and volleyed it, so it's been bump bump over the back of me, and he's just finished it, and he just went. Unlucky son, I've done it to better players than you. <laughs> During training. Uh, brilliant. He was and a I, player, wasn't he? I'm just like, like yeah. oh, he's, by the way, I've never, uh, I touched on it on the radio the other day, he's he's the best finisher I've seen. Never, he could blast it, but he would just pass it. It was like it was going in slow motion. Dodds, he had the same kind of talent, uh, Billy Dodds. He had that kind of passing ability, he never really smashed it in. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, aye, but you, you can go on forever. Every single one of them Some had something. Uh-huh. Even Mo, I mean Moles as well. Oh, what I mean, a player. Rod Walls. I mean, nobody really speaks about Rod Walls, but he was sensational for them. Mm-hmm. Um, Alex McLeish came in in December. Mm. Were you quite excited when he got the job? Um, I, I, I don't know. You, I, I, it's that long long back, you know, it's hard to kind of mm-hmm. remember what you were thinking. Um, me, and, me and the manager, uh, I still didn't like to call my manager, you know, Alec, or that it feels kind of disrespectful, but um, we had a kind of love hate thing. Um, I remember Craig Moore says he he coaches you like he's his son, and he was he was hard on me. And he was, I guess it was probably the easy easy thing to be hard on me because there were so many stars that yeah. never really made mistakes. So and he was young in his his management role. So I think you know he was in a bit of experience as well. But he always played me in the big games for some reason. Um, always played me in the cup finals. Always. <laughs> Celtic away and I would play me in these games and then get dropped for Pat at Thistle home Would you go and see him in that? Could you could you do that when as a young player? Could you go and see him and ask why you'd been dropped? Yeah, it was a bit like that and I think that maybe infuriated him a wee bit that who's this wee 21 year old questioning me um, but I wasn't questioning like a in a 
kind of I wasn't being antagonistic. I was actually wanting to think, what can I get better at? Mm. Approach. But when you do that two, three, four times, it, it must become annoying. Do you uh, wish you'd never done that then? Um, no, because it's what I felt. Mm -hmm. I, I go much on gut feeling. If, if I felt it and I never did it, I would then say, well, maybe he'd have given me information that could have helped me. So, yeah. Was McLeish a lot more one for giving the young boys a chance? Um, if you've, but it's one of the ones, if you're good enough, you, you, get, you always get your chance. Mm -hmm. You always get in. I mean, Stevie Hughes played some games, Bob, myself, Al McGregor. So no, it was, it was a good standard though. The, 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 the boys that came in were good football. Stevie Hughes was a sensational Rangers player. But again, he was unlucky. He was at a time where there was eight sensational midfielders. Mm -hmm. um, another guy, obviously, you were a fullback. Mm. No better to learn than Arthur Newman. Aye, we interviewed him. Good laugh, isn't he? He's, yeah, he's one of he's one of life's good guys. Mm -hmm. um, constantly smiling, snake caps, loves dancing. You know, he's just yeah, he's just a cracking guy. But when you look at him now, he's probably the same weight as when he's when he played. You know, he yes, just lives his life properly. You know, he's just a did they bring that to Rangers then, all the foreign boys? Mm. A better standard of looking after yourself? Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Being big, boys, boys like Big Ammo. Remember, I was, went up to lunch one day and he was just eating a mound of broccoli. That was his lunch. <laughs> just a mound of broccoli with Parmesan shaved over it. Sounds a wee bit poncy, right? Uh -huh. But that was, they were just... I remember we were playing Dundee United away. Obviously, in the, in the morning, you didn't really eat much. So it's toast and jam or whatever. <laughs> this is a bit poncy but Ronald's I just see Ronald cutting strawberries like slicing strawberries <laughs> and putting it on his toast and sprinkling sugar on it just, that's just strawberry jam Ronald but it just looked <laughs> better looked better right <laughs> so it's would just, they slag you for your diet because Arthur Newman says Barry Ferguson's diet he had to crack down on his diet yeah but I think Barry, Barry took it on board I think um, Barry was a machine by the way mm -hmm. machine um yeah, but there wasn't really bad professionals in the 80s. Of course, you know, if you look at back in the 80s, there was still a drinking culture. Um, Did they foreign boys have a drink as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, they, they love it. Cigars. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but they got on a bit and they produced and they won tro tre trophies, trebles. Mm -hmm. So what are you going to say? Brilliant. Uh, you won your first trophy against Selic, mm -hmm. May 2002, Scottish mm -hmm. Cup 3-2. One of the best games you played in? I think it was... It was probably my best performance, like uh, individually. Um, yeah, the boy Thompson never kicked the ball that day. Um, what was your thinking? Just stop him from playing. It was for me. He he was never going to run me, ever. Um, but my 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 thought process when I was a fullback was: Can I influence the boy on the ball that doesn't get to Thompson? Can I be close enough that I can detach from Oz? So that one doesn't get played in the middle, and I can get there. So when it comes, I'm on it. So that was that was my biggest thing, and, and yeah, he never he never got his head up once. He just ended up playing it back, playing it back, playing it back. I had him on toast that day. You talk about the big characters in that team. Talk mm -hmm. us through the dressing room before that a certain game in a Scottish Cup final. Everybody is quiet, and really? everybody's got the butterflies playing Celtic they're, they're a phenomenal side as well so you know it's a 50-50 shout um, you know you, you'll have your characters just before we go right hey first to this no the usual mm -hmm. cliched football chat but being in a dressing room before us it's a different dressing room totally different there's a calmness there's a there's a level of class it sounds a bit again touching that word poncy but it was a, there was a level of class and a level of assuredness we, we've got this and in that 3-2 game, even though it's 3-2, I thought we, we had Celtic on the ropes, I thought. Mm -hmm. Second half on the ropes. You say, the big, obviously, the guys have played the massive games. Have you seen any big players affected by a Celtic and Rangers game? Um, or was it easy for, for the boys, as you say? I think Fernando Rickson's first one. I think he got a rude awakening. I think he got whipped off by uh, Dick Advocate at Celtic, but I think Celtic... Trounced Rangers five, I think, mm -hmm. and Rickson got whipped. I think Bobby Petter was having going to town on him. Mm -hmm. I think it was that game. Um, I think that was probably one that for me stands out. But he, he recovered, didn't he? You know, he went on had a, a great Rangers career. 
Um, but yeah, but sometimes you just have an off day. Mm -hmm. So it's not just the fact you're playing Celtic, it's just you're having an off day. But in cup finals, we, we, we had 11 boys that were at it that day. How good was that feeling when you seen Lovencrans score 10 seconds to go? I couldn't believe it. Couldn't believe it. It was just like, it was coming because Neely was terrorising their right fullback. I can't remember who it was. Was it a guy? Uh, maybe it would have been a guy. Uh, Terry was destroying him, basically. Uh, um, and if you see it back, the ball just bounces up just before Neely strikes it. Just bounces off the ground. And it's just a perfect connection. And it's, it's a really a, a awkward header, actually. And when that goes in. But the, the most elated I felt was when Barry scored the free kick past Rob Douglas' top corner. Oh, that was that was that was raw. But when that went in, everybody was like, "Yeah, now it's on, now it's on." Mm -hmm. And then when the final whistle went, uh, it sounds like a bit, but I shouldn't maybe say this, but I just started green. Oz cuddled me. Of course, you should say it, mate. Oz cuddled, cuddled me in on the halfway line area, and I just. I wasn't bubbling, but I just welled up. It was just, you know, all the days. And why just the pressure of building up to the, the game? All the days at Bathgate with Bomber and John McGregor and then told you're never going to be good enough and then you get played in the cup final against Celtic with number eight on your back. That was Gaz's number. You eight, were you? Number eight, aye. Wow. So um, when the final whistle went, you do think of all the things? But I think, I think they're already in you. Mm -hmm. And then when you get that first trophy, and you're playing in Celtic and your mum and that's watching it just the floodgates just oof, emotional and then then you get a shiver and then it's you know Party time. now you're a hot shot man. where did you go after it? oh god knows god knows steaming no but we always used to go back to it sounds ridiculous to say we always used to go back to Ibrox when we won trophies but it was quite frequent um, and we would go and celebrate with the, with the kitchen ladies and the staff you know the, the, the real the real people good whose idea was that the manager's? that was just Rangers way right Mm. How was the atmosphere at, at that game? It's there's that much noise you can't hear in it. That sounds strange. Mm. You, you can't pick out anything. It's like white noise. You can't you can't pick out anything. Um, and even like if, if if Craig's shouting, you can you can. F so you're basically on autopilot because you can't hear much. Mm. So if, if it's not like you, know, you hear it. Talk. <laughs> Playing an eyeball sort of back kid, you're, you're not hearing anything. Yeah. So you're on autopilot. Is it that loud that you can't hear mm. anything? Mm. Wow. Right, you've named great times for yourself and that, that Rangers team and you've said it was top players. Give us one that was the best. That you looked at every day and thought, wow. Barry. Really? Pound for pound, I would say Barry, yeah. And amongst your Kenijas and Newmans? And yeah, I mean, it's easy to, it's easy to say he was one that Kenija most. because he's won a World Cup. Mm -hmm. It's easy to say that, but... Just relentless. Ronald De Bourne, that would be easy Monday, easy Tuesday. A few tricks on the Thursday. <laughs> well, Barry was at it every day. Again, the heartbeat. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the player that would say that, that taught me most, it would be Oz, Craig Moore. Uh, you've mentioned him quite a bit. Um, uh, he's, he's, he, was, uh, he was great for me. What, just talking to you all the time? Just, just. Just to, just putting you into positions that fullback should be going in there. Too many centre halves. Yeah, get in here and help me look good. Nah, I was like, I'll deal with it. You deal with him, I'll deal with him. And then over your head, I'll be in that channel to protect you. That's a real man. That's a proper Rangers player. I'll take responsibility. And do you know where I think it comes from? I think it's when Craig Moore played it right back and Goffey was feeding him the wee, holding on to it and then throwing it to us at the last minute. You know, the crowd start on you, so he was sympathetic um, to me in that in that sense. Um, yeah, I, I just looked up to him as a man and as, as a. A surprise he's not went on to management. Um, he could do it. Mm -hmm. can do it and then he puts his mind to. It. I think he's that kind of guy. Right. So if he's not decided to do it, then it's because he's got his eye on something else. So you're flying. You make your Scotland debut in two thousand and two mm -hmm. with wee Bertie. Mm -hmm. Must have been a proud moment. You remember where you were when you got the call up and got told you were getting called up? I think it was a cancellation. Right. Somebody pulled out. Um, and and that was in my wee flat in Jordan Hill. And Al McQuish called me and said, oh, by the way, you're at, you have to report to, I think it was the, the hotel, the McDonald Hotel up in East Cobride. Uh, Crutherland, is it? Um, and I just thought, so, okay. What do you expect, you know? So I just went up there and, and I'll obviously meet up with other boys and that. 
Um, it was nice. It was nice. Um, but yeah, yeah, it just happened so quick. You didn't think about it. You didn't kind of overthink it. Um, but yeah, of course, it's nice to play with your country. So we expected to do more then. They looked at you as a Rangers player. You need to do something better yeah. than what you, than what we can. Whereas I don't know if Rangers, they'd expect for me, but they were certainly expected from Barry and and, and and the Celtic ones. Um, yeah, but. No, and, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm very cautious of what I'm saying. But you know, there's no bad, there's no bad players playing for Scotland. Mm -hmm. um, but just used to the, the top, top, top level to then have good players, but it wasn't quite the, the, the top that we were dealing with at club level. Uh, how did you find me, Bertie? He's just, just a nice man. Too nice, I think. Mm -hmm. um, he had some kind of, you know, I'm grateful he's gave me my, my, my Scotland caps. Just, just some. I think he could have got more care round about him, protected him more, because he was he was honest. Bet he was honest. Mm -hmm. Maybe not cute enough for for the Scotland, the vultures that you know that that, that follow the, the the national team. Um, but yeah, I was I'm, I'm eternally grateful for getting caps under Bertie. But there, there was some st strange sessions that we did that I'm thinking. I will remember we, <laughs> before. Before the Germany game, actually, um, all the strikers had to stand with their legs apart, and there would be midfielders ten yards away, just rolling balls towards, you know, their like, legs, as yeah. if a nutmeg, uh -huh. and all the defenders had to come in behind, like basically go through the through back, the back yeah. of the strikers. Uh -huh. and I'm thinking they can get dead legs in their calves, and, and but he was just, I don't know if he wanted to toughen up the strikers because the Germans were going to be at it, or he wanted us to be at it. I'm just thinking that could have been that's that's a, a risky one mm -hmm. and one that the boys have probably never had before um, so I've, I've not done that with my players <laughs> <laughs> 2002, 2003 you go on the treble what a year for yourself and, and the club mm. talk us through it again it's, it's, it's much it's, it's kind of hazy um, but of course to, to win a treble special I mean there's only seven Rangers teams I think that have done it before and to be part of that um, playing in the two cup finals, um, never featured. I thought I'd done nineteen, twenty games in the league, I guess. So I, I earned, I earned the, mm -hmm. the, the treble when I right, you know, to, to say I won a treble, especially when you're playing the cup finals. Um, if I hadn't played in the cup finals, it would feel it wasn't really a treble for me as such. But when you play in the cup final, I think, yeah, I've, I've earned that, and I was, I'm super proud of that. That's for me the biggest thing that I've, I've, I've ever achieved in football and. Uh, that's that's a that's a thing that I'm yeah. yeah. Did you always think that squad was capable of doing the treble? You didn't think like that. No. Nah. Why? Because they're like as strong as yeah. You? They're, they're so strong. So it's 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 margins. I mean, if you think about it, if you win the league in the last day of the season with a goal, that's how fine the margins are. Mm -hmm. So you go for being a double winner to a treble winner by one goal. It's it's too close to call. So you you, you didn't you're not allowed to think like that. Mm. You maybe quietly think we'd want to win that, you know, that Rangers mentality. Mm -hmm. So what, you say the squads are so good, both of them. What, what gave you that wee edge, you think? Just circumstance. Right. Somebody slips, somebody gets a penalty. Think it's that fine yeah, there? Yeah, yeah. With, with, with the Celtic team, look at their team. At that time, I mean, Look uh, at their front three. <laughs> uh -huh. Special, special, uh, special time. Good, good. Two, two giants going against each other, just toe to toe. With great football players everywhere. Uh -huh. And did the Derbys play a big part in that season as well? Um, Winning the Derbys? Do you know what, again, it's, it's that far back, I can't remember, uh -huh. but obviously beating them in the cup final helps. But Hearts and misses a penalty in the cup final. Uh -huh. um, Bagamo, I think, dived, dived in and they get a penalty. He misses it, we go on to win it. So again, margin. Uh, apart from the final, any other Derbys that, that stand out your favourite? Um, I think I think my first one at Celtic Park. I got man in a match from Sky and BBC. Um, I think that would be. You know, there's, there's a there's a clip. Obviously, my mum's got all these things taped on VHS or Betamax or whatever it was, um, and it says that I'm. Oh, there's young Ross. Looks so calm in the in the tunnel, but I'd just been spewing my ringer because <laughs> the, the manager had said that I was picking up Larson at corners. Ross seven. I'm thinking seven. Oh no, it's Larson. Oof. And then I just felt the water coming behind here. I just nipped to the toilet and two yogurts and two bananas, right? 
and then you go out in the tunnel and look all calm as if it's <laughs> normal. <laughs> but absolutely not. Uh-huh. But that would be my, my, the game that sticks. Would you be nervy for most of the games? Uh, was, uh, yeah, you're, you're, basically you're nervous uh-huh. all the time. I was more nervous in the, the games where I knew we were going to have oh, 70% God. possession. Home to Livingston and they're playing 4 5 one. They are the days because the crowd get a wee bit nervy if you don't score and that. And of course, I get get it in the neck sometimes. Has yeah. been there. How tough is that? Is it just play when the crowd brutal. are on you? But is brutal. it hard? Brutal, brutal. It's, what? Just can you know? Just no shake it off. You just you, your your body wants to tell you to just keep it simple. But then you've got your gaffer shouting, "Play it forward, play it forward," and it's tight. And you're ten they wee passes, and they get cut out. Oh. Uh-huh. <laughs> Pop it in a bar and just, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> you did. <laughs> uh, just on the, the treble, um, was there big celebrations at the end of it? Yeah, I think we we probably overdone it when we were in the league. I think Barry Ferguson said I think the manager well. gave us three days off. And you had the cup final on the, the weekend? On, on, the, on the Saturday against Dundee. And I remember I came on at half time and I got cramp. <sighs> I got cramp. Somebody else said that as well, I think. How's that possible? <laughs> Well, I know how it was possible because we've been let off for three days and we were, yeah. you know, it's unprofessional, basically. Um, but we grind it, big almost goes ahead on you're a treble winner mm-hmm. in the rest history. So, great career for Rangers, obviously. Mm. Uh, we'll now go on to your management. Can you remember a time in your career that you thought, right, this is what I want to do, manage it? Um, it was when I was at Livingston, I was 31. Plagued with injury all the time, lower back problems, led to hamstring problems all the time. Tells me that. Playing for nothing basically, costing me money to play. I just thought that. And I forced myself, I kind of tricked myself into thinking that not I'm done with football. And I went and started studying engineering. I ended up working in the oil industry for, for four years. And But alongside that, I started my management. I got started doing my B license in Norway. Um, and then just Total, totally immersed myself with the football. Um, basically a nerd. And that's my life now. There's, there's nothing else I want to do. Mm-hmm. Um, how did how did the first job in Norway come about? Sola FK? Sola, Sola had just been relegated from the third to the fourth. Um, and I, I just went up to one of their games just to get out of the house, basically. And there, a guy who'd been involved in Premier League in Norway was the kind of CEO or whatever you want to call it. And he just said, do you fancy it? And I said, ah, I fancy it. And then went in and, and basically tore the place apart, put in standards, um, encouraged boys that weren't getting paid to go for training twice a week to four times a week. Yeah. And, you know, these boys are working. And uh, it's a thing you hear often in Scotland, yeah, but you can't, yeah, but you can't. Yeah, but how can you know? It's a mentality. Mm-hmm. How, how, why are part-time players only training twice a week in Scotland? Then I say that, mate, I'm happy to just train one time, mate, you're going to but, ruin no, but, <laughs> but do you want it, or do you not want it? Uh-huh. And that was what I was basically saying to the boys. I want it, and if you don't want it, you're not going to be here, I'll find somebody else at this. Um, do you think that made a big difference? Absolutely. Well, they went on in double promotion and finished fifth, which is the highest level the club's ever been at. Really? And never been higher since. See, the highs as a manager, does it match the highs as a player? No. No? Nah. How come? Because you can't kind of boot anybody, or you can't, kind of, <laughs> you know, it's just, it's just, it's a, there's an X factor of being a player, isn't there, and winning yeah, the trophies yeah. a player. When you win it as a manager, you don't want it. For me, anyway, I don't want to go, that's the players. The players do it for you. You can only put them in positions, you can only set them up and set, you know, certain, certain formations and, and certain standards that, that allow them to go and play with freedom. Mm-hmm. Um, so, no, it's, it's about, when players win it, I'm at the back of the queue. That's the boys. What, what are the bits about management, especially on your first job, what did you enjoy the most? Learning, making mistakes. Um, I consciously made the decision that I was going to change my formation every year. Uh, so I went from 4-2-3-1 to 4-3-3. Boom. And then when I went to the Faroe Islands, I went 3-5-2, 3-4-3. So now I've got a, a rounded view of what works, what doesn't work. So it was basically me sitting in my apprenticeship rather than just honing in and being good at 4 one Because I might go into a job next week and I've not got players for 4-3-3. So you need to switch it. So then, but then I can go on autopilot. Um, so that that was the, knowing you're learning and knowing you're getting better. There's no better feeling than that. 
So if somebody was watching this, say a chairman or a director, mm. what would you bring to a club as a manager? Um, Obviously high standards. Well, high standards, um, discipline. Um, discipline, you would say, okay, you're fine if you're one minute late. Not that level of discipline. Discipline in your position. Discipline on how you train. The distances between you and the other player. Distances between you and your opponent. Um, so that level of discipline. Um, but no, no just getting people into trouble if they're wearing the wrong socks or something. That's, that's part of it, of course. But keeping distances and, and discipline in your position is the biggest thing for me. Do you do coaching every day? Or do you yeah, I'm manage a, it? I'm a head coach. I'm, no, uh, I'm not a stand at the side and let coaches do everything. No, I'm, I'm, I'm hands on. And what about style of play? Is it passing style, or is it? Yeah, yeah. Well, again, it's, 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 you've got to win football matches. So it's everybody talks about that. I've never heard anybody say, yeah, I love lumping it. <laughs> but if you've only got players that can lump it, then you need to lump it. It's then what you do from there, phase two of that banged long no what do you do there how do you contain your opponent if they counter you all these kind of things so no it's uh, it's very much circumstantial and, and what players you've got how your style's going to be just on the managers that you played under mm. uh, what have you take from from certain ones managers I think the best one overall would be would be Hoddle I think where was that at Wills at Wills right mm, he was special um, so I, I, would, I would say I would say that my that word philosophy, but it's probably been very much the Dutch style from from Jan Wouters. Um, man management skills from Hoddle, detail as well on your opponent. He was good at that. Um, I just wish I can master that Walter Smith stare, no say nothing, and make players that are forty year old when they've quit still be scared of you. <laughs> I need to master that stare. Uh, oh, that's a gift. I'm still scared of that. Uh, yeah, uh, oh, what a, what a man, what a... Can you remember a time in particular that he gave you the stare? Did you do something wrong? No, but he, he, he does, no, he didn't do anything wrong. It's just like, he just look at you, the side of the head there. Yeah. And then you're nervous. <laughs> <laughs> what a gift. Just born with that, isn't he? Yeah, but he was, he was, yeah, he's an oracle of football, isn't he? Uh, uh, just on the future, looking to get back in, in Scotland. Yeah. Uh, any level? Um, well, professional, obviously. <laughs> Yeah, 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 basically. But for me, it's not about just getting a job. It's got to be the right job. Because you go in an environment where teams just want to survive, teams just want to tick the box and just, just get beyond, you know, just get by kind of thing. It's not for me. It needs to be something that's got a, a passion, that's got a, a clear goal, that's going to allow me full autonomy uh, to handle football affairs. No chairman phoning up and telling me what teams to pick and that. that that's something that, that happened, happened, in the Faroes, uh, happened in the Faroe Islands and it's something that I don't think I deserve um, with, the, with, with the level of knowledge that I have. Um, so yeah, for me it'll be environment, not just taking a job. That, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a bad strategy. So I'm, I need to wait, be patient, still keep doing the rounds basically. Like I said, going into places like Hibbering and Rangers, Dundee United, seeing what they're doing. Can I be part of that? I don't know. Um, time will tell. I wish you all the best, mate. Thanks very much. Thanks very much. Cheers, Thank you. Thanks.